Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth and final session in American English Live Series 17. We're so excited that each of you are here today with us. My name is Chris, and I'll be with you here today along with my colleagues behind the scene, Heather, who will be our moderator, helping answer your questions and responding to your comments during the session. So let's today begin with these wonderful audience comments from our most recent webinar, starting the year as a culturally responsive language classrooms with Lauren Anderson. First up, we have Tasneem from India. Tasneem says, teaching a culturally mixed classroom has become an important issue with increased social mobility. This webinar was particularly useful. The activities are doable and makes the students reflect critically on their assets. Next up, we have Ahmed from Morocco. Ahmed says, this webinar is depicting the reality that all teachers should become aware of, as the classroom is a place where learners who have different traditions, beliefs, and ideologies come together for one purpose, which is learning. Great comment, Ahmed, thank you. And finally, we have Kimberly from Guatemala. Kimberly states, it was awesome, I loved it. It will help so very much. It is never easy at the beginning of the school year, but these tools and advice will make it interesting and better. Even though our school year is from January to October, I will apply it starting now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly, for your wonderful comments. We love to see our teacher participants actively engaged in professional development. So please continue to share your thoughts about our webinars by offering feedback through the end of session quiz form or by emailing them to American English Webinars at FHI360.org. We may feature one of your comments during the next session. Throughout Series 17, we have explored the themes of critical thinking and inclusive practices in ELT. We hope you've been able to use the practical ideas we share. So here's what to expect today. The session is about 60 minutes long, the presenter will present the material, and I, as your host, will ask questions and make comments too. But we really hope to hear from you, our audience, so that we can address your ideas and experiences. Please share your thoughts using the comments feature or chat box. When our session comes to a close, you will have an opportunity to receive a digital badge for your participation. At the end of the webinar, we'll share a link in the comments. Click on that link and complete a short quiz about today's session. You must answer two out of three multiple choice questions correctly. Once you have successfully passed the quiz, you can expect to get your badge via email within about a week. Before we begin our webinar today, I wanted to let you all know that Kate Bain is taking some well-deserved leave time, and then we'll be switching roles in her office to work on another program. This will mean that she will no longer be the host of these webinars. I want to read some remarks Kate pre prepared for you all. Kate said, I love American English Live webinars and have learned so much from our presenters, our team of webinar producers, and all of you, our wonderful audience. I will continue to be working on English language education programs very similar to this one and will join you as a viewer whenever I can. I can't wait to see the learning and sharing that will continue. Thank you for inspiring me through the past few years and sharing your enthusiasm and love for teaching and learning. Thank you, Kate, for all your contributions to American Live webinars. And we'd also like to let you know that after today, you may not be seeing our dear, dear moderator, Heather's contributions during live events. Let me remind you a little bit about her. Heather Benucci is a senior TESOL consultant for the Office of English Language Programs through FHI 360 for both the Open Program and English Access Microscholarship Program. She is also a contributing editor for English Teaching Forum. Since 2012, Heather has been a presenter and lead webinar producer. She has supported the production of over 180 webinars attended by more than a half million teachers around the world. She has also presented or co-presented seven webinars for our program on topics like digital literacy, critical thinking, teaching academic writing, and much more. Over the years, Heather has coached and mentored our webinar production team, as well as over 100 presenters, making sure each webinar is engaging for our audience. Webinars wouldn't be what they are today without her expertise, creativity, leadership, and dedication. 
Heather, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Chris. Hello, teachers out there around the world. Um, I just wanted to say a quick thank you uh, to all of you uh, who I have been learning with for over 10 years through this webinar program. I also wanna say a big thanks to the production team, both at uh, the US Department of State and FHI 360 and all my colleagues and the presenters I've had the, the joy of working with. So I will be here still supporting webinars in a different capacity. And as Chris mentioned, uh, working to support English language learning around the world through different programs with the US Department of State. But honestly, you all have made webinars the best part of my job over the last decade. So thank you very much. Uh, keep learning, keep sharing. Enjoy this session. Thank you, much. Thank you so much, Heather. That was wonderful. And now I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Chris McDonald. I am a global program officer, um, and I am also a great colleague and friend of Kate. And as of today, I will be your new host. I work in the Office of English Language Programs on the Virtual Engagement and Materials Development Team. I am the social media manager and strategist responsible for all of our office's Facebook pages, including the Access Headquarters page, American English at State, American English for Educators page, along with the American English YouTube channel and the AmericanEnglish.state.gov websites. I began working in our office in 2020. Prior to that, I was an English language fellow in Ho Chi Minh City. I've taught English for language learners for over 20 years in Japan, South Africa, Italy, Vietnam, and the United States. I am so, so very excited to be here, here with you all today and to learn and to share with you all. And last, before we begin, we wanna let you know about the fantastic AE Live Series 18 schedule we have planned for you all. We'll explore social emotional learning in the first two sessions. In the remainder of the series, we will focus on integrating critical thinking and ELT. You can use the link being shared in the chat and comments to receive reminders about Series 18 sessions. And now for today's webinar, Open Educational Resources for English Language Teaching. EFL teachers can struggle to find English language learning materials to supplement their textbooks. Open Educational Resources, OERs, can help teachers because they include high quality, free online materials. This presentation explains what OERs are and the different types and levels of OERs shows how to find them using a database and explores ways to adapt them for, for your students. And we are pleased to introduce our presenter, Kendra Staley. Kendra Staley is currently a PhD student in education at George Mason University with specializations in multilingual, multicultural education, teaching and teacher education and critical studies. She previously taught ESL, EFL, English literature and composition in the United States and has conducted teacher training events internationally in Guatemala, China, Indonesia, Colombia, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. She began teaching English because of her interest in cross-cultural understanding and has been working in the education field for over 17 years. Her teaching and research interests include social justice within language teaching, intercultural communications, curriculum development, teacher training, and online education. Welcome, Kendra. Thank you for the introduction, Chris. Welcome to American English Live. I'm Kendra and speaking with you today from Fairfax, Virginia. I'm excited to have all of you join me today for this professional development session about open educational resources for English language teaching. Having lived for 10 years outside of the US, I know from personal experience how difficult and expensive it can be to find high quality English teaching materials. OERs can be really helpful for EFL teachers to supplement their textbooks because they are free online materials. Today, we'll focus on exploring OERs created by English language teachers. I'm excited to share these wonderful resources with all of you. In this webinar, we will define OERs, learn how to locate and use OERs, consider how to adapt OERs to suit our classroom needs, discover how to share your own materials with others. 
first, we'll define more specifically what OERs are. What do you think are the characteristics of open educational resources or OERs? I'd like to hear your ideas. Yes, everybody, we'd love to hear your ideas. So please let us know in the chat, what do you think are characteristics of open educational resources or OERs? We'd love to hear from you. So I'm seeing Kendra, people are saying free materials at Salvador. Um, lots of people are just saying hello and telling us where they're from, from all over the world and that they're watching. That's great. So nice. So maybe they give you some hints. I know people are saying that they're free resources or free accessibility. Um, yeah, lots of people are saying free and they should be accessible to everyone. Um, lots of people are giving great characteristics of what they think OERs are. People are also talking about games, videos, magazines. Um, they're very shareable materials. These are all wonderful comments, everybody. Keep them coming and let us know in the comments. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to see that um, you have some idea about what OERs are. We'll talk about some more details now. So OERs are teaching, learning, and research materials. As many of you said, they're created and licensed to be free, which is great for all teachers. Their user, the user can own, share, and modify, and some can be found in the creative comments. So on the right-hand side, Here's an example of an OER that I recently used with my own students. This is a comic book created by a teacher to address cyberbullying or online bullying with her students. I'll discuss how I use this OER in more depth later in the webinar. So what is the Creative Commons? It's a global nonprofit organization that supports the sharing and reusing of knowledge with free legal tools. Their licenses tell us how we can use, adapt, share, and reproduce content. So these are like guidelines to help us. So for the Creative Commons rules and symbols, you might see this little person here. That means attribution. Attribution is the author of the original source must be credited. So for example, Chris creates a successful activities for his students, and he shares it with me and I share it with others. I must say that Chris was the person who made the activity. That way I give him credit. Now you might see that dollar sign with the X through. That means non-commercial. This work must be used for non-commercial purposes. So people can't republish and sell the resource. So again, back to Chris's, the, the example with Chris. I can't put my name on Chris's activity, either post it online or make physical copies and sell it to others for money. So I can't make money off of Chris's activity. So no derivatives, that's the equal sign. That means the material can be reused, but they cannot be changed or adapted. So Chris gave me permission to share the activity with others, but he asked me not to make changes to it. So I can share it, but I can't change the activity. Now, if you see the backward C sign, that means share alike. The materials must be shared under a similar license. So you can't take these resources and then republish them using a less open license. So for example, Chris gave me permission to share the activity with others and to allow others to make changes to it. So I can give it to others to use, but I can't tell them that they are not allowed to make changes. That would be less open. You'll see these symbols later when we search for OERs in an online digital library. So Chris, I have a question for you. Why is this resource an OER? Okay, great question. Let me take a quick look at it, Kendra. Um, so I see, I see the Creative Commons person symbol uh, there at the bottom in the gray. Uh, so I know that that means that the author Bridget Hanna, she has given others permission to, to use this, to share this, as well as to change these materials. Right, but, exactly. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, we, but, but we also have to give her attribution or credit for creating these materials. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Chris. Um, as you can see at the bottom, 
I've listed the author's name, year she added the material, title of the material, location of where I found the material, and the link to the website. So I've given her credit for these materials. I recently used an OER lesson plan about the woman we see in the photo here, Amanda Gorman, who's a famous American poet. I was talking about American culture with my Korean students in the US, and we analyzed one of her poems. In a few minutes, I'll show you the steps for locating wonderful OERs like this one. First, let's discuss the many benefits of using OERs. I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, everybody, let, oh, go for it, Kendra, I'm sorry. Sorry, what are the benefits of using OERs? Yeah, let us know, everybody, in the chat. Um, can you think of any benefits of using OERs? We'd love to hear from you. Um, so I know I can think of a few, but I really want our wonderful audience to share what they think the benefits are. Let's see what we have coming through. Um, we have, we have got uh, Vali Vali saying that because they are free, it's a time saving. That's from Patricia Caceres. Thank you, Patricia. Lots of people are saying, you know, they're, they're just, they support lifelong learning. They're often quality materials. Um, it helps a lot in teaching students clearly about everything. So lots of great comments. Um, yeah, lot, they're shareable. They just increase uh, accessibility to education. We have uh, Carolina saying that students have access to these materials uh, without having to worry about copyright issues. Um, so yeah, lots of like supporting learning and then the free, they'll improve the standard of teaching and learning. These are all great responses for the benefits of OERs. Keep those comments coming, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad that you have already identified many benefits. So as you know, there are many benefits to using OERs, like they're free, as many people have mentioned, accessible online, and often cover all skills that we teach our students. For me, the main benefit of using OERs created by fellow teachers is that I have confidence that their materials are of high quality. These teachers have created the materials for their own students. Their students enjoyed them and they want to share them with other educators. OERs are different from random material I could download after doing a simple search on the internet. By accessing OERs, I'm joining an online community of educators around the world who are sharing their knowledge. So next, I'll show you some great examples of OERs for ELT, English language teaching, ranging from CEPHER, which is the Common European Framework of Reference, A1 to C2 levels. As we can see in the chart on the right, CEPHER A1 to A2 are beginning learners who are comfortable with communicating about familiar everyday topics in another language while B1 to B2 are intermediate learners who are able to communicate about more complex academic topics in another language. There are OERs for all proficiency levels. The OERs on this slide can be accessed in the references of this webinar. I'd like to point out three to you that I think are really useful. On the left, we see a digital workbook for beginning ESOL. So it's A1 which again is the beginning level. So it has 10 units focused on grammar, which is a fairly common skill to, to teach, right, grammar, um, but it's within short online lectures. So that's something that I think is interesting about this book. Often we see grammar within writing or reading, but this is grammar within speaking and listening context, again, for those beginning students. There are practice activities included at the end of each unit. Now the OER in the middle, daily departures, speed reading passages for English language learners, this is at the A2 level. So still beginners, but a little bit higher than A1. In this book, there's 20 short speed or timed readings with comprehension questions. Timed readings calculate how many words per minute you can read. Now the goal for this is to increase your reading speed while maintaining comprehension. This skill is useful for preparing for standardized English language tests like the TOEFL in the US and IELTS in the UK. 
My guess is you are familiar with those two tests. The last one on the right, preparing for university reading is B2. So this is at the intermediate level. And I am actually one of the authors, co-authors of this OER. We created it to help international students prepare for the length and difficulty of academic readings in university classes in the US. There are five chapters based on authentic, lengthy academic readings with language learning focus, such as comprehension questions and vocabulary support. So students can still prepare for the academic setting, but there's still some language support because they are intermediate and not advanced. But B2 is usually the level you will need to enter university classes in the US. If you're interested in reading about the process of creating our OER, you can read our English Teaching Forum article, The Potential of Open Educational Resources for English Language Teaching and Learning from Selection to Adaptation. It can also be accessed in the references of this webinar. Now I'd like to hear from you. Which of these three OERs could you use with your students and why? That's great. Thank you, Kendra. In our audience out there where you all are thinking of which one of these three OERs that you would use with your students and why, uh, I want to share a few comments with you, Kendra, and everybody else um, about some of the benefits of OERs. So give everybody some time. So Farm and Khan says that OERs are easy to use and we don't have to make a lot of effort to create new ones. Um, we've got Renee Ralelio saying that it adds diversity to class planning. And Brian Flores Nito says it offers cost savings, it promotes access to knowledge, it encourages collaboration among educators, and fosters continuous improvement. All great comments. So yeah, everybody, please let us know which one of these three OERs you would use with your students and why. Um, so I'm seeing Nadia, Gabby, CT saying all of them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Layla uh, saying that I would use the second one to help my students pass the IELTS exam. I think that's a good choice, Layla. Um, and then we have Catherine Najau saying the first two because they're very useful and she would use them with like appropriate for her students level. We're having lots of teachers kind of saying all of them. And yeah, just like, it depends on the students level I'm also seeing from our, from our audience on Facebook. So lots of great, great comments, lots of all three of them with lots of, lots of exclamation points, as well as it depends on the students level. These are great comments, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad that you um, find them useful for your students. I do. Um, I just wanted to comment when Chris said about the benefit is we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? That uh, a listener made. Um, that's so true, right? These are materials from fellow teachers and they were successful and they wanna share them. Um, we might want to make changes if allowed, but um, we'll still starting out from a really good basis and that's important. A point distinction about OERs. So let's think about how can we locate or find OERs? So there are a number of ways to find OERs. OER Commons is my favorite online digital library to find useful OERs to use with my own students. I've also shared this database with teachers in Colombia and Uzbekistan when conducting teacher professional development workshops. I'm excited to share it with even more English language teachers like you today. As we can see, OER Commons is full of educational resources created by teachers like you, and they're free, like we've talked about many times, online, and then they cover all skills, listening, speaking, reading, writing, grammar, vocabulary, as well as all proficiency level, beginning, intermediate to advanced. Now, I would like to share some OER search tips with you. There might be many res resources in the search results. So take the time to look through all of them. Choose one that looks interesting for your students. Again, you know your students, you know their level, you know their interests, you know your educational context. Some of the resources aren't useful for your situation, but keep looking, be patient. It'll take some time, but you'll discover good materials that other teachers have created and that you can use with your own students. So I'm curious, what topics will you search the OER Commons for? 
Yeah, everybody, let us know when you are searching the OER Commons, what types of topics will you want to, to search for? Um, we'd love to have you share us in the chat, and I'll be happy to, to let everybody else know the types of topics that you'll be searching for. I know, Kendra, that I would probably search for something regarding like American culture, maybe like music or, or food or sports. I always have found some good OERs in the OER comments for that. Um, yeah, those are great topics. Let's see here. Um, we've got lots of people just saying this is a, a great webinar uh, so far and that they're really excited to be here to learn about OER Commons. Um, we've got um, Valentina Sitnik. She was saying that she would search uh, about American teens. We also have Asha saying that she would search for comprehension passages on certain topics. Edgar saying about the functions of figures of speech. Ooh, here's a good one from uh, Masea. She would search for about the Women's World Cup that's happening now. That's very appropriate for right now. Um, lots of people writing about uh, multilingualism, uh, academic things, lots of like culture, celebrations, habits, cuisine, food. Um, we have uh, Asama saying individual differences. These are all great topics. Yeah, seeing lots of, um, we have Zoom Amani saying, um, about tradition and holidays, music, poetry, history, comments. Wow, these are great search topics, everybody. These are wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Excellent. Thank you. Clearly have a lot of experience and talented teachers here today. So what I would like to do now is I would like us to look at an example with screenshots of the search steps when using a cell phone. The process is the same when using a computer, but it will look slightly different. However, I know many of you will look using your phones. So I want us to look at it from the view of a cell phone. So first you want to type OER Commons in your web browser. Then you'll go to the website. You wanna click on the magnifying glass to open the search bar. So when you open the search bar, it will look like this. When I showed OER Commons to primary school teachers in Uzbekistan, they suggested we search for food as that is a common topic in English language textbooks for beginners. So in the search bar, type food. For the subject area filter, select English language arts because we are English language teachers. For the education level filter, select middle school. So middle school is typically fifth to eighth grades in the USA. And we have 12 grades in total for primary and secondary school. Students' ages in these grades range from 10 to 14 years old. Um, so that might help you um, situate it in terms of your own students and grade level. For the standards level, filter, select standard. Now different schools, different organizations have different specific standards, but for an international context, those are not important for us. So simply leave it at standard and make sure you click the button search. So now you'll look through the search results. Choose one, again, based on your students' needs and their interest, and click on the title. You'll have to click on the title to, for the um, resource to open. I chose the US versus UK English lesson because I'm often asked about the differences in spelling and vocabulary between American and British English. Then you'll read the description to learn more about the material. So when we look more closely at the description on the right here, we can see more details about the materials. The subject is English language arts. The grade level is middle and high school. So that would be secondary school. The type of material is an activity and lesson. And we can also see the author down at the bottom, Andrea. When she uploaded the material to OER Commons 2022, and importantly, we can see the Creative Commons license and attribution symbol that we talked about earlier. So again, we can use the materials, we just have to give the author credit, which is what I did by including that information. So then you go on to the next step, you want to click view resource, then click next. then you want to download the American English and British English PowerPoint. So I encourage you to look at these materials and save them either to your cell phone or computer in advance in case you don't have good access to internet um, at your school. 
So when you're able to save the materials to your devices, click next to go to the third page and then download the US Pancake and UK Pancake Recipe Activity. So you can see here for this resource, the teacher um, uploaded a PowerPoint and a Word document. Sometimes teachers will upload lesson plans or videos or PDFs or pictures. It really just depends on what the teacher created. Um, so you never really know what you're going to find until you look, which makes it exciting, I think. And I know there are many buttons that you'll need to click, but I promise that eventually you will find useful materials for your own students. So again, be patient. And we can also read the descriptions of the materials to see how to use them with our students. For example, the pancake recipes are designed to be an information gap or fill in the blank paired activity to do after covering the information about the differences in food vocabulary in spellings in the PowerPoint slides. So these materials go together. Here are two slides from the presentation. First, the teacher shows different photos with both the American English term and the British English term, like French fries or chips on the left, a cookie or biscuit on the right. So as the teacher, first you would show the slides to your students. Next, you would do the information gap activity. So you would divide your students into pairs, so into twos. One student has recipe A and the other recipe B. Pairs read their recipe ingredients and instructions to each other and complete the missing words. Luckily, there's also master recipes so that you, the teacher, have the complete recipe for both types of pancakes. You don't have to look it up. You have all the information there in the lesson plans in the materials. So now Chris and I will demonstrate this activity, the information gap activity. As you can see here, I have the American pancake recipe A on the left and it includes information gaps. So there's some missing information. Chris has the American pancake recipe B, which is the master version that includes the full ingredient list. He'll read his recipe ingredients and I'll fill in my blanks. Then we'll switch and do the same thing with the British pancake recipe. All right, are you ready, Chris? I'm ready, but I'm getting distracted by these pancakes. Man, they look <laughs> yummy. I'm getting a little bit hungry here. But yes, let's do it, Kendra. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So, so I need to fill in the gap. So I would say one and a half cups of flour. Good. Then I will write a flour in my recipe. Okay. And then the next one um three tablespoons of sugar so i'll write tablespoons in my recipe and we'll continue this activity until both of us have completed our recipes we can also see here that there's differences in ingredients and pancake shape between the american and british version i have a question for you now how could you use these oer food materials with your students yeah, everybody, let us know how could you use these OER food materials with your students? I know, I know, Kendra, I'm not alone. We're getting lots of comments. Lots of people are saying, oh, man, the pancakes look great. I'm really, really hungry. But yeah, everybody, let us know in the comments um, about how you could use these food materials with your students. Um, I think people are still kind of just like really thinking the pancakes look so yummy. So we'll get we'll <laughs> give it a little bit to see how they can use um, these OER food materials with your students. Um, let's see, we've got uh, Ayato Gato saying that uh, to learn and increase vocabulary. Um, lots of people are just saying um, for vocabulary practice, that's Lara Clarendon and Pharmacon is saying that we can give a small project to them. And we have some people saying that we can use these for quick thinking activities. Catherine is saying, that for vocabulary practices. Uh, we have a lot of people just saying, thank you for sharing this website, that it's an excellent website and, website and resource. Um, and that this activity, Layla is saying that this is an interesting activity and that I would make an activity to help them experiencing cooking and use, the, use it in the English context. And Asha is saying that we could create similar exercises for other dishes, not just pancakes. 
that's great. Um, lots of people just saying how to follow directions, vocabulary. Um, so yeah, this is really great. So just learning about ingredients in different cultures. Um, so yeah, these are lots of great uh, comments, everybody. Keep them coming. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, for sure, you could compare um, if you have a type of pancake in your country, which one is it closer to? Is it more similar to the American version or the, the British one? Um, you could have your students make recipes of their favorite dishes. Um, you could have them pretend to have a cooking show where they demonstrate um, with real food or not. It could be pretend food, um, how to make a dish. So there's lots of op um, opportunities for, for some fun language practice here with food. All right, so let's return to the cyberbullying comic that I showed you earlier. I want to point out the Creative Commons symbols for this OER. So attribution, non-commercial, and no derivatives. So Chris, could you please remind us what these symbols mean? Yeah, absolutely, Kendra, because as you know, these symbols are really important. Um, and so attribution means that we must give the teacher credit who made this. Like at the bottom of the slide that we're looking at right now, you'll see the author's name, the year of sharing the OER, the title of the OER, and the location of the OER. And then the non-commercial symbol means that we can't sell it or make money from the comic. And no derivative symbol means that we can't make changes to the OER, so we have to use it exactly as it is. Exactly, thanks, Chris. With my own students, we first defined what cyberbullying is. So we talked about how it was sending messages using digital technology. So like social media, text messages to frighten or upset someone. We identified ways to respond to cyberbullying, such as telling an adult, like a teacher, a parent, a trusted friend, um, by taking screenshots of the instance of cyberbullying. And then I shared this cyberbullying comic electronically with them in our class's WhatsApp messaging group. And so again, because of the Creative Commons rules, I couldn't make any changes, but I could um, share it exactly how the teacher created it, which is what she requested. So I shared the file with the PDF file with my class in our WhatsApp group. The students accessed the file on their cell phones and they read it by themselves. Then we discussed the comic, the meaning, what we saw, what happened. You can also print out the comic to share with your students if you don't have access to the internet at your school or if your students aren't allowed to have their cell phones in, in the class. Lastly, in small groups, my students created their own short anti-cyberbullying comic strip about an instance of cyberbullying and how the problem was minimized or addressed so that cyberbullying won't happen again. They drew their comics on the whiteboards using multicolored markers. That was the resources that I had available, but you could also have students draw on sheets of paper with a pencil or use an online app. I was really impressed by my students' comics and their solutions to cyberbullying. You can also alternatively have your students create a role play um, that's similar to what they read um, or of their own ideas about how to deal with bullying. So we've talked a lot about great examples of OERs and their benefits, but there can be also there can also be drawbacks. I'd like to hear from you now. What challenges do you see with using OERs? Yeah, thanks for sharing all those great benefits, but audience, please let us know what you think are some of the challenges or drawbacks with using OERs. Please let us know in the chat um, because there definitely are challenges. Let's see, Kendra, what people are saying. They think some uh, some challenges are for using OERs. I know I can think of a couple. Um, Dean Paul saying lots of links to click. Um, so yeah, that's definitely for sure. Um, and then Catherine Najaw saying the, the lack of internet. Um, so maybe it's not for their situation particularly, but I think that's where they would have to, you know, use the search function to, to, to get a little bit better. And we have Nettie Fortas saying that the material might not be adequate and it needs time to be kind of analyzed to, to kind of go through it. And I think you mentioned that to take your time to go through it. Um, so yeah, just the lots of people are saying just the availability and the connection, 
or just kind of tech issues with the lack of or lack of devices um, to adapt some resources according to the teaching content. That's from Gabby Castillo. Thank you so much, Gabby. Um, so yeah, lots of uh, people talking about just internet or trying to find like the most suitable materials for them, or even just kind of like the how available they are. These are all great, great comments, people, about the different drawbacks and challenges. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Those are um, definitely valid, real concerns. Um, so unreliable internet connectivity, that's an, in, that's an issue everywhere around the world, in the US as well. So what I tried to do, like I mentioned earlier, is do the search ahead of time. Find materials, take the time to download them onto a device, save them, have them printed if you're going to use them in printed form. So a little bit of advanced planning can help um, avoid um, relying on internet that might not be very um, consistent. Um, the other thing that is a big challenge is that the activities, as some of you mentioned, aren't always suitable for all of the context. That's why it's really important to adapt or to make changes to OERs. So now I would like to give you tips for adapting OERs. So the usefulness of activities. Again, you can change the activity, right? You know your students and your educational context the best. So if there's a suggestion in the lesson plan or activity that isn't appropriate or um, it's just not possible for you to do or for your students to do, change it to something that does make sense for you. Now, the language difficulty. I think this is one of the most common things that language teachers do. We change the language. We oftentimes simplify vocabulary and shorten sentence length. At the same time, the opposite could be true. If the language is too easy for more advanced students, ask them to change the language to be more academic and combine sentences to be longer. Oftentimes we will have a range of student levels in our class. So it's important to differentiate or have different options for our more beginning students and our more advanced students. And so we'll want to do that as well with OERs. The last one, cultural responsiveness, you want to remove inappropriate references. So again, rely on your own knowledge of your students, your culture, the country, the educational context, what's allowed, what's not allowed, what might upset students or parents or other teachers and make those changes. You can also add connections to local culture. So what I like to do is change the names of the people and the activities to my own students. And that usually makes them laugh. Um, I'll also change the locations to local um, famous places or even a market or um, a restaurant that students like to go to a cafeteria, something like that, um, just to connect them to the material more. The result of doing all of these adaptations is we want to increase student interest and engagement in learning. So lastly, I want you to think about creating your own OERs to share with other teachers. So like I said, the OER Commons is a place where teachers can share information um, with each other. So I encourage you to not only find information on OER Commons, but to also share your own successful materials that you've created and used for your own students. I know that you have fantastic ideas and activities that you've mentioned today that you can share with this international online educational community. So now I would like you to give an example of material that you created yourself that you could share on OER Commons. Yeah, everybody, uh, while you're thinking of different examples of materials that you created yourself, please share with us when you can think of them and put them in the chat box. We'd love to hear what you have shared. So I'll let you know, Kendra, we've got lots of great comments coming in, people saying that they're finding this super useful and they did, yeah, they're saying that timing, you know, this is very time consuming, but they're still very interested and they're definitely going to look into it if they haven't done it before. So yes, please, every, anybody, please give us an example of a, a material that you created yourself that you could share on the OER Commons. Um, we have uh, Ranasis Mani saying that um, they created comprehension passages as well as grammar topics. We've got Edgar saying that he's created worksheets and presentations. 
Um, Maria Jesus Moya is talking about Domino. I'm not really sure what Domino is. Is that a game, uh, Maria? But lots of people, Juan Pablo is talking about, he's created PowerPoint presentations uh, pertaining to the simple present. Uh, Jenny Chavez has created card games. Uh, Deli Espinoza uh, has created presentations. We've got Dean Paul, he's done IELTS writing, task two response essays. Very specific, Dean, that's great. And Asma Gamal, uh, she's created acting and miming different activities and games. We've got teachers saying that they've created graphic organizers, lots of uh, PowerPoints and different presentations that teachers have shared. I think those would be great that they could share in the OER, OER comments. Um, thank you so much, everybody. It sounds like you've created some, some great, great materials that would be awesome for the OER comments. Thank you so much. Just imagine, Chris, if all of the teachers here today would submit their materials and we could all share together. Think of all that, the wonderful resources we would have. I know there's so many great resources. All our awesome teachers have created. That'd be wonderful. You guys need to go check this out if you have it. So thank you. Keep, keep all these great ideas coming. Thank yeah. you. So here are some steps about how to add your own successful materials that you created for your students to OER comments. So as you notice here, there's a button, add OER. When you click on it, you'll see a few more buttons, of course, like we talked about, lots of clicks. Um, there's a create resource, and then there's also more, learn more about creating OER. So when you click on those buttons, um, luckily they have a video and step-by-step -step instructions to help everyone share their materials with fellow educators and learners. So you can use their open author tool to contribute to this online community of educators and learners. So they do have tools and steps to help us learn how to contribute to the OER Commons. So in this webinar, we defined OERs, we learned how to locate and use OERs, we considered how to adapt OERs to suit our classroom needs, we discovered how to share your own materials with others. Connected to that, I'm curious, with whom will you share the information you learned about OERs? Yes, everybody, you've shared with us the types of OERs that you could put on there, but with whom will you share this information you learned about OERs today? Uh, please let us know in, in the chat um, who you would share with us. And Layla, for sure, she's saying my colleagues, absolutely, Layla, and Valentina, I would definitely share with my colleagues as well. Um, we've got um, colleagues, students, um, you know, Doc Street saying very specific, I would share with Nikki in South Africa, oh. <laughs> uh, and, and Kieran with my, with my younger siblings, you know, lots of people just saying I'd share them with my colleagues, with my student teachers, um, yeah, lots of just my colleagues and students, my friends, as well as my students in my class. Yeah, lots of people just wanting to spread this great knowledge that you've shared with us today, Kendra, about who you, they would share this information about OERs. Thank you so much, everybody. So make sure you do share all the information you learned today with all your colleagues. Thank you so much. That's great. I'm really happy to hear that you are excited about this website and all the materials and you also plan to share it with people, with your coworkers, with your students, with your friends. Um, and I would suggest that you do so in person. So when I have talked about OER Commons with teachers before, it's been in person. We've sat in a room together, like a teacher professional development workshop type of environment, but it could even be something more informally, right? Maybe at lunchtime or after school, you're talking to students or friends or coworkers and you show them the website. Um, so take some time to go through those steps that I have showed you um, to learn how to use it um, because tech literacy skills um, can take a while and it can be overwhelming. It can be a little scary because it's new and many people are still learning how to access things online. That's true of anything we find online. Um, but like this website, there's many things we have to click, many um, filtering options we have to choose. So I would encourage you to do it with people in person, take out your phones or your computers and go through the steps together. You can help each other when you're having problems, if you don't understand what to select or what to click um, and just spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes together 
um, until you learn how to navigate or search through the site. Uh, because I have found when I've done that with other teachers, it does take 15, 20 minutes, but then people understand and they're so excited and they're finding all of these materials and they're sharing together and they're learning together. And it's a great way to create a community with your fellow teachers or with your students about how to find materials that are of a really good high quality. Because again, other teachers have created them and want to share them with other teachers and other students. So the references, I've talked about these a few times today. Here are the materials that I referenced in today's webinar. The first one is an article with 11 OERs for ELT. Now I reviewed three of those earlier and I encourage you to check out the others. So there are seven more that you can check out or eight if I can count. <laughs> the fourth article is from English Teaching Forum where I and two other English language teachers discuss how to create, select and adapt OERs. The second one there from Hannah is The New Day. That's the one about the poet, Amanda Gorman. The third one is the food one about US versus UK English. And then a few down, Torres is a cyberbullying. If you think you would like to um, use that comic strip to talk about cyberbullying with your students, but encourage you to look at those references. Just click on those links to access them. It's, Thank it's you, Kendra, everyone. We've got a great question coming in, Kendra, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, we have um, from Yuya y uh, Yamamoto is asking, mm -hmm. I wonder what we can do if the authors ask us to follow the no derivatives, but it seems that we need to change the activity to adapt to our classroom. So what would we do in that case? Well, I mean, I would try to honor what the rule says, right? And the symbol says, so that teacher wants to share the material with you. Um, so I would try not to make any changes just to be respectful, right? Just like if you gave anyone something and you asked them not to do something to it, you would want them to be respectful of you, of course. Um, it could be possible where, you know, maybe there are many steps to an activity and you just do one, you know, maybe you say step five, I can't do here, right? That's different than making a bunch of changes. Um, so just try to be respectful, I would say, of the rules because the people who created the materials and are kindly sharing them with us asked you to follow their wishes. Great, thank you so much, Kendra. Um, we really appreciate you sharing your expertise on OERs and how to find them, how to use them and how to adapt all these open educational resources to support English language learning and teaching.